today is the day I am making the first of what I basically bought the machine to do, and that is climbing holds. This is a blank. Uh, this is the backup blank because the one loaded in the machine is the first attempt, and like most of my machining endeavors, it will not likely be a one and done because somewhere in the cam will have been a grenade that I did not witness prior. You see how that goes. So, I have got a second backup blank in the event I fuck this one up and it goes bang. But, I think I've got the cam dialed. Um, the last video you got a chance to see was me dialing in feeds and speeds. Uh, the big asterisk on that is that I did feeds and speeds for this guy. Uh, tool number 201 from Nomad Tools. The quarter inch end mill, three flute, uh, three quarter inch depth of cut, and we got all... Alright. It's not technically the most FU moment, but uh, the card on the camera completely just crapped out on me. So, recapping, I did all that testing on the last video on my three quarter inch uh, length, one quarter inch diameter, three flute, end mill. The one caveat on this part is I have done zero testing with this tool, which is a quarter inch ball nose end mill, three flute, also same three quarter inch length of cut. So, I am going to use very similar testing parameters, but the ball nose is for the finishing of the hold, so I'm not as concerned because my depths of cut are negligible and I'm effect effectively in that area of machining where you're approaching chip thinning, so higher feeds at those higher RPMs should be just fine. So not really losing too much sleep, although I am interested to see how well the surface finish turns out in wood, because I've only ever done this in aluminum, so we'll see. We get to find out together. I'm gonna finish getting the machine set up, post the cam, zero off my machine, and hopefully not break any end mills today. Okay, that took a little longer than expected, but I have everything set up. I've got the camera angle so you guys actually get to see what's going on. I've got program loaded up. I've got my zero zero set. I think, I think I'm ready to get going. Okay, didn't grenade, but I think my end mill might have come slightly out of its collet, because that looked like it stepped down, which is not what I wanted. So, let's tighten up our part. Let's uh, stop. All right, so I might be quasi-fucked. Uh, Chipoko, Carbide Create, fucking whoever you guys are, like, you built such a beautiful machine. You got so much billet machining. Like, there's a lot of thought that went into this tool, and I, I deeply appreciate that. I really do. That's why I have this tool. Got the linear rails. It's damn near straight and level and plumb right out the fucking box. What the fuck, dude? Like, really? 
So I might only be able to get through the roughing section of this part and then have to wait a couple more days for the other one to come in. I may brute force grind out a spare 12 millimeter wrench to try to make something for the collet nut work. We'll see. For now, I think I got it tightened enough before this failure fucking happened, so we're just gonna try it again. That's where we're at. We're just gonna try it again. Well, in a classic home problem situation, you need a tool, you make a tool. Uh, what was a relatively cheap 13 millimeter Craftsman wrench is now a custom backup wrench for my collet nut while the ones I ordered online take their slow sweet time to show up. So at least I could finish out this job today in full earnest and hopefully, fingers crossed, get to the point that I can actually machine uh, the ball and mill the whole nine yards today. That's the game plan. Attempt number two, start, zoom. I think unlike before where I was getting kind of chicken shit and I bumped it down to 50% feed rate, I think I'm gonna leave it at 100%, 90 inches a minute. And go from there. After the first little bit of uh, machining there, and aside from the tool coming loose at the start, which was my fault, uh, rather uneventful, and it looks like it's supposed to. So now we're gonna swap out tools. Interesting to note, the tool is. Toasty, but not death. The call it nut though. That's a hot. That's a hot nut. Don't have anywhere near as much torque on this one, so I'm not as concerned. Uh, I'm gonna do an intermittent back job though. Or I'm gonna turn on the spindle with the door open like a dipshit. It may or may not have been a plastic bag that I was required to use. Be back in business. All right, tool two is loaded, my quarter inch ball end mill. It is now touching off. It's gonna be running at the same RPM, so I don't have to stress on switching anything out on that guy. Spindle. Oh 
damn, I might actually have a gouge in my part. Oh no! Yeah, I totally missed that uh, upper radius space on that Z height. Parts been finished machining. Let's go ahead and get it off the bed. All right, I have the hold off, and I gotta say, for a first part, I don't feel too bad. I mean, okay, I got this. I got this nick in the in the one side of it from where the part started to somewhat shift at the beginning. <laughs> also. Uh, I was getting a little, you know, impatient with my work holding, and though I know on some kind of core level, I probably should have gone ahead and added either one of two things: either added some, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, sandpaper to the bottom, which adds maybe ten thou. But adding that sandpaper to the bottom gives this thing a little bit of kind of grit to stick to, and makes it less liable for sliding. Or the more likely situation, because this is going to be a long-term process that I do a lot of these, um, then the better move is on my board to actually add a whole series of screws facing the opposite direction. And those screws facing the opposite direction uh, or coming up from the bottom will somewhat stab into the raw stock that I have. And though technically speaking that does somewhat damage the hold, it's not that big of a deal because this back face is non-cosmetic and non-essential. It just has to be flat. So having a couple little pinholes used for manufacturing makes no difference. Um, but that being said, uh, in my haste to just get this stupid thing to stay down for the roughing, um, I, I dented the shit out of the washer, um, which tells me I was a little too much force. A little, uh, a little too much force there. So um, now I know, use, use a little less torque. Um, this is a really, really cool kind of fucky pinch because if you grab it here it's it's almost total shit because it wants to slip off uh if you grab it kind of like a uh a crimp you almost can um you can kind of use your whole hand to pinch on it which that part i'm actually super stoked on so from that it works Ooh, actually if you grab it with your thumb it leaves this really satisfying hold but if you miss that oh you're gonna pop right off and then the really cool part is uh, surface finish on this, man. That was like off the machine, basically perfect. I mean, yeah, I'll probably still want to hit this with, you know, a couple thousand grit. And then the cool part too is it also left me my little divot where I can add my, my side screw. So the whole it's rotating problem that can be eliminated here. I now have the pilot hole for that. So I can go ahead and pre-drill, drill out, countersink. Uh, where a, a anti-spin hole is gonna fit. For a first part, I'm excited. I'm really excited. This is this is really, really cool. It's been six months that I've had this thing in my garage, unable to do anything with it. And now, now I'm in business, man. Look at this thing. This is, this is beautiful. This is gonna be fun. Uh, thank you guys for joining. That's been day one of CNC. Well, not really day one, part one of the CNC and one of many. We're gonna be making quite a few new fun widgets in the weeks and months to come. So stay tuned, I'll see you on the next one.